country in the whole world is the United States. But guess what's uh, the, the happiest country in the whole world? Number one. It's not the United States. So money does not <laughs> make happiness. It is... Okay, so uh, I'll give you a few of them. So number one is Switzerland. Uh, number two is Iceland. Number three is Denmark. Number four is Norway. Number five is Canada. Number six is Finland. Uh, the USA is number 11, actually number 15. Uh, what's, uh, what's really common between Switzerland, Finland, Iceland, Denmark, and Norway? For those of you who work in Europe, there's a, a focus on the well-being. On the well-being, right? Uh, you know, you hear on the radio when uh, there's an accident, before they treat you, they ask you first what kind of insurance you have. And if you go to the emergency room, if you don't have insurance, they take you to the you know, county hospital because that's where you know, it's, it's free, basically, right? Uh, in those countries, there's no, I mean, health insurance is a saucer. Everybody gets insured, right? They don't ask you what insurance do you have. Uh, that scale of happiness, uh, they, thought, they talk about generosity, they talk about social support, they talk about uh, the health life expectancy, they talk about the freedom to make life choices, and the perception of corruption. So all those are the factors that will make a country happy, you know, number one or number 50. And you know, there's the list, I'll, I'll leave the list here, but there's some Muslim countries on that list as well, right? <laughs> uh, there's at least eight of them. Can someone guess uh, any of them? Dubai? Huh? Dubai? Saudi Arabia, okay. Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Dubai. Kuwait, Uzbekistan. <laughs> yeah. So, what happened last year? <laughs> okay. So, uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, from an Islamic perspective. Uh, really, what uh, what should uh, what should we focus on uh, to be happy? Uh, I think number one uh, is to minimize the impact of you know the unfortunate events that happens to us. Uh, there's a, a Chinese proverb that says you cannot start the birds of uh, of anxiety uh, from flying over your head. You can't stop the birds of anxieties and sadness to be flying over your head. But you can stop them from making a nest over your head. So in life, we go through many events, unfortunate events, right? And there are birds flying over our head. What you and I should do is, we should not allow them to make a nest over our head, in our mind and our heart. If you go through an unfortunate event, if we keep talking about this event for the rest of our life, we're making, we're allowing this to have, to make a nest over our head, in our head, in our mind. And all we talk about what happened on that day, what happened in that marriage, what happened to this person, what happened in this accident, what happened in this job, what happened in the stock market in 2000, how much money I lost, and we keep talking about this unfortunate event, we will never be happy. Because now we're allowing this event to sit in our mind and our heart, and we keep reminding ourselves to this. And just like you know, we see sometimes you drive on Tampa, and you know there's someone you know, maybe died in a car accident, and there's a flower, you know, <laughs> on that corner, right? So the family is reminding themselves about what happened every time they pass by. Oh, that's where the accident happened. That should never happen to us. We should not allow things to sit in our mind and our heart. It, it happens. Yes, it happens. We can't stop them from happening. But we should not allow them to sit in our mind and our heart. And that's why there's a, and this is a, the du'a, inshallah, all of us should memorize. We, we, the, the message of Allah is reminding us to say, seek refuge with Allah from grief and anxiety. The grief is things that happened in the past. We seek refuge with Allah from grief, things that happened in the past, and anxiety and things worrying about the future. Okay. So let's just focus about the past right now. 
So unfortunate events that happen, you know, last hour, last week, last year, 10 years ago, it's over. We won't be able to change it. We can't. Okay? So we'll just get over it. And we we'll learn from our mistakes. Learn from that marriage. Learn from that accident. Learn from that bad investment. Learn from that job that, that you, you took. And move on. But to, for us to keep talking about it, it will make us unhappy. So that's number one. Number two is to, uh, to have goals for ourselves. Real goals for ourselves. Uh, we can't just live life you know, as it goes. Right? And, and those goals could be, you know, uh, if you're going to school, is to finish your bachelor. Or if you finish your school, to uh, finish a certification. It could be a, you know, a technical one, or it could be something, it could be a, a realtor, right? Uh, it could be a CPA, it could be a, you know, a, a CCI, a technical certification. Make a goal for yourself. Could be an exam that you pass. And it's sort of like, every time you make a goal for yourself, and you achieve that goal, you feel very good about yourself. Okay? Uh, it could be, you know, you say, you know what? I'll stop using credit cards. If I can't afford it, I will not buy it. Or you say, inshallah, I have a, a, a goal that by end of 2016, I'll pay off my credit card. So make, we should make goals for ourselves. And when we reach those goals, it will make us very happy. Even before reaching those goals, if I'm halfway through, I say, oh, alhamdulillah, I'm halfway through. I'm only 20% done, 80% more to go, right? Uh, so making goals for ourselves uh, would make us happy. Uh, third is to, uh, and as the sister said to me, satisfied. With, with what we have. Uh, there's a beautiful hadith, and the, the messenger of Allah Sallam is telling us that two qualities, if they are found in a, in a person, uh, he or she will be uh, grateful and will be patient. That he is written in the side of Allah as uh, grateful, shakir, and patient, sabr. Okay. And the two qualities are to compare ourselves when it comes to the affairs of, of this dunya, to people who are less fortunate than we are. To compare ourselves in this dunya, in this life, to people who are less fortunate than we are. I'll give you an example. If you look in the parking lot and you find maybe a BMW. Oh, how, oh he's driving a BMW, I'm just driving a... <laughs> Uh, an old beat-up car, right? Oh, look, he's, they're happily married, and I'm not happy now. Oh, look, at, uh, you know, he, uh, he can take the weekends off, and I cannot take the weekends off. Oh, he's hourly, and I'm salary. Oh, all oh, the children go to this private school, my children go to college school, right? Who, every time we compare ourselves to people who are more fortunate than we are, we will never be happy. So I wish to say, Alhamdulillah, I have a car. Alhamdulillah, I am not taking the bus. Alhamdulillah, I have a job. Alhamdulillah, I have a family. Maybe not the perfect family, but Alhamdulillah, I have a family. Alhamdulillah, I have a roof over my head. Right. So we should compare ourselves to people who are less fortunate than we are. Okay. And if, if really, if there's nothing to compare to, the Syrian refugees, you know, a snowstorm in Lebanon and Syria, it's, it's miserable. Right? And again, Alhamdulillah, the Islamic Center of Burbank is collecting blankets and jackets. So if you have a chance, you go to the Burbank Islamic Center and they'll take it to, to the city, inshallah. So this is the first part, to compare ourselves to people who are less fortunate than we are, and we say Alhamdulillah. And then when it comes to the second quality, when it comes to the affairs of the dunya, of, of the deen, this religion, to compare ourselves to people who are more righteous than we are. So we can say, well, I came for Jummah today. At least I came for Jummah. They didn't come for Jummah. At least I came today for the lecture. They didn't come for the lecture. At least I fasted in Ramadan. They didn't fast in Ramadan. <laughs> At least I'm wearing the hijab. She's not wearing the hijab. So we should not compare ourselves in the religion to people who are less, quote unquote, righteous than we are. We should compare ourselves to people who are more righteous than we are. And then we say, and he says, and he also you do your best to follow the footsteps. So those are the two qualities that are important for, for happiness. When it comes to the affairs of this life, 
We compare ourselves to people who are less fortunate than we are. When it comes to the affairs of the deen, we compare ourselves to people who are more righteous than we are. Okay? Uh, another one is to, uh, and this is, you know, many of us, myself included, is to, to plan and to focus. You know, in the Quran it says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمُنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ The believers who are focused, who are in their prayer, they are successful. We're not focused. I just, I prayed to Raqqa before I came here, uh, giving a message. I do not know which two surahs I recited. I don't. <laughs> uh, but sometimes, you know, when we pray to Raqqa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we think about what we recite, and we think about the dua we say in the sujood, after we say assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum, wow, <laughs> it makes a huge difference. Okay. So this is one of the things we should do, to, to focus. Right? You know how you, uh, in school, you at work, you know, you know, when you do a homework or an assignment, and they say, well, no, not good enough. You need to redo it or create this first page, the first paragraph. So one of the things I, I, I explained it, I said, you know, when I pray is over us, and I did not realize what I prayed, I'm going to repeat the prayer again. <laughs> and I did this for a couple of prayers, and then I give up. But it made a difference to me, because now I'm telling myself, why am I repeating four rakah again for us? Because the first four rakah I've done, it is useless. I did not think about the recitation, I did not get anything out of it. So then we try. You know, if you, in your prayer, after you pray, after you say, alaykum, salam alaykum, you say, oh, I, I didn't feel a difference. Repeat the prayer again. And this time, you will know why you're repeating it. <laughs> uh, and we'll like to make it. Or maybe you should say, uh, I better make this a good prayer because I'm going to have to repeat it if I don't. <laughs> uh, that's, you know, one, one approach. Uh, but also, you know, focusing on, on our, our affairs. I mean, I, you know, how many promises do we make to people who break our promises? You know, my own brother, you know, he, uh, uh, you know, he says, well, inshallah, I'm going to meet you in half an hour to, uh, uh, to go see our uncle. Very good. Okay, I'll meet you in half an hour. And I can hear him talking to his wife. Yeah, inshallah, I'll be home in half an hour. So how are we going to be home in half an hour and then drive another 15 minutes to meet me to go see my uncle? Right? <laughs> and he's in the hospital with another patient. Right? So, uh, you know, he, he's doing this very naively, right? But you know, he's going to make his wife upset. He's going to make me upset. And he will not spend quality time with the patient he's, he's with right now. Right? So what's wrong with him or any of us to say, you know what, Ahmed, I won't be able to meet you in half an hour. Maybe we should go to work. And tell his wife, I'll be home in about an hour, right? And to give his time to that patient. We need to be honest with ourselves. Seriously, we, we are so nice to each other, and we break our promises just to be nice. But actually, we're not nice by doing that. Right? So let's just be frank. If someone calls you to give him a right, or give him a, give him a right, and you're sleeping your time, don't lie to him. Say, you know what? I'm tired. <laughs> Very simple, right? Or you know what? I cannot make it today. You know, my wife is from Afghanistan, and you have to say yes to everything. <laughs> and I said, you don't have to say yes to everything. You can tell people, you know what? I cannot make it today. Okay. Uh, there's a, a beautiful uh, story where uh, the messenger of Allah Salam was traveling with uh, a Sahabi, I forget his name. And he, the Sahabi was very poor. So instead of uh, the messenger of Allah giving him money, he wants to help him by saying, you sell me your camel, and I'll give money for the camel. Right? So he said, oh, oh, I wanted to buy this camel. And he said, uh, uh, how much? And he said, uh, I'll give you one dinar for it. So the message of Allah is still in the Sahabi. I'll give you one dinar for this camel. The Sahabi said, Kad khasimni ya Rasulullah. For well, message of Allah, you're not fair to me. Look, I mean, you should have, he could have just said, he's a messenger of Allah. I should, I should just say, yes, yes, yes. Right. He didn't. He was very open with the messenger of Allah. You are not fair to me, your message. It's worth more than that. And this is a sahabi talking to you. The messenger of Allah. And he offered him more. Right? And this is something we need to do. We shouldn't be shy to be ourselves. 
said, you know what, I cannot do it today. It's too much for you. And instead of being home in half an hour, be honest. You know how it's not going to take you half an hour to be home. Just be honest. Or even, I can't afford it. Very simple. Being honest, planning, and focusing will make us happy. Because if we, again, we, if we short ourselves and others, they will not be happy, they will not be happy. Uh, and then another one is uh, helping others. And I, I gave many examples for this. But there's a, a beautiful hadith that says, أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُرُورٌ تُدْخُلُوا عَلَى مُسْلِمٍ The most beloved deeds in the sight of Allah Almighty is happiness that you bring to a Muslim. Not you bring to yourself. The best deeds in the sight of Allah, not the Umrah and Ramadan and the Hajjud, which is also good. But the best deeds in the sight of Allah Almighty is happiness that you bring to a Muslim. And I swear to Allah, and you can just examples here. Anytime you make another Muslim happy, you yourself will be happy. It doesn't have to be with money. Okay? There are so many brothers, all what they want to just ask for advice. That's it. Because you have that experience in that field. All what they want is someone to talk to. Oh. All what they want is someone to say assalamu alaikum. Or someone to, to smile in, in their face. Right? Uh, or someone to say, how are you doing today? Right? Uh, that's all. By making other people happy, we're making ourselves happy. And again, it is the best deeds in the sight of Allah Almighty. Can someone share an experience they made another Muslim happy? I know it's kind of like you know, private, but just for the sake of learning. <laughs> Anyone wants to share an experience that they made uh, a Muslim happy and as a result they became happy themselves? You have one? Okay. <laughs> All right. <coughs> well, like for, for learning, I mean, uh, the Quran says, uh, uh, spend in the sake of Allah openly and secretly, right? Why would you spend openly for the sake of Allah? So other people can learn from you, right? So, uh, I, 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 I'll give an example of uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, some, just two weeks ago, uh, you know, young kids, you know, they, they, they like soft blankets, they get soft blankets. Their mom got them soft blankets from from, uh, from Costco. Uh, and you know, they keep grabbing them with the soft blankets. And then when the mom told them about, uh, basically, uh, about the, the Syrian refugees and all that stuff, and the kids gave their blankets to, you know, for the Syrian refugees. And it, the mom was saying how happy she, she were, right, that basically by helping other people, she did not even know, right, that she felt she was saying she felt you know, a feeling that she cannot describe. You know, like, you know, peace of mind, mind, tranquility. That uh, she took something from her kids, not by force, you know, by their choice, to give it to the Syrian refugees. Another brother, you know, he said instead of going to the Islamic Center of their bank to donate the, the clothing, uh, I'll collect it in St. Gabriel and I'll drive my car, his car, to take it to their bank. And he's telling about how this made him happy because he made other people happy. He didn't even know. All what he did is, he said, if you're driving to Burbank, you bring it to the local master, and I'll take it myself. So again, this is examples of, you know, by making people happy, we ourselves become happy. I don't know if anyone wants to share any examples. So I have to move on. <laughs> uh, there's a <coughs> few uh, examples from the Quran or verses uh, that, that talks about happiness. Uh, uh, say, oh Muhammad, this is the verse of the Quran. With the blessing of Allah and His mercy, people should be happy. The blessings and mercy of Allah is much better than what they gather in the Quran. Just being happy with the mercy. I mean, being happy with the mercy and the blessings of Allah. And you know, it says, Allah has given you so many ni'mas, blessings, hidden, right? And also open, right? Open, right? Now you say, you say the health is a ni'mah, yes, it's very open, right? Uh, but there are things that, uh, ni'mas from Allah Almighty that we don't, we just take for granted. You know, we're, we're breathing normally. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we can see it normally, right? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh, there's air we can breathe. There's running water, we open the faucet, and there's water, you know. 
uh, we can walk normally, alhamdulillah. So there's ni'mas from Allah Almighty that we just take for granted. So just think about this ni'mah of Allah Almighty will make us happy. Another thing that will make us happy is uh, the prayer itself. And, and the message of Allah said, the same Bilal, Arihna bihaya Bilal. Oh Bilal, make us happy, right? Uh, make us uh, comfortable with the prayer. And I mentioned Allah, you pray to Allah, to Allah Almighty, you know what you're saying in the prayer, the feeling is there. And you know, when do we feel it? When we have a difficulty or hardship, and you say, you what, you know, I'm going to make two rakah to Allah Almighty. Uh, it's not time for prayer, but I'm making wudu, and I'm praying two rakah to Allah Almighty to ask Allah Almighty to get me out of this difficulty. And that's when you feel the impact of the prayer. You know what, you know, you know if you have a headache, and you say, I'm just going to take excessive right now, you know, 500 milligrams, and then in half an hour, 15 minutes, <coughs> the headache, you know, goes away. Same thing, right? Because we pray all the time, right? But when you pray for a specific reason, because we have a problem, right? Or something we want Allah Almighty to, to guide us in, then you will feel the difference. I'm well, sure. Try. And, and there's the, the message of Asan Kana, Ida Hazabahu Am, Hamma Al Salah. When he's concerned about a matter, what does he do? He rushes to the prayer. So that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is, uh, is to is the dua, okay? And again, the dua that you just you know that you know the meaning of the dua, right? <laughs> uh, you know, so many of us memorize dua from our childhood, and we don't know what it means, right? We need to try to understand the dua, or even pray in English, you know. So uh, the messenger of Allah Sallam came to the masjid, and he found a sahabi sitting down, and it was not the time for the prayer. And this is the first you know, thing I want to think about. It was not the time for the prayer, and this Sahabi was in the masjid, right? And he said, why am I seeing you here, and it's not time for the prayer? He said, oh, Messenger of Allah, what do you want? I have so much to think about, anxieties, you know, grief, and also I owe money. Right? So the first thing is, when this Sahabi is having a difficulty or a problem, what did he do? Did he go to smoke a cigarette? <laughs> did he go to the bar? You know, he went to the masjid. And even though it was not time for the prayer. And Allah, it makes a difference, you know, when we're not feeling too good. Go to the masjid. It's not Jummah, yes, yeah, not Jummah. But I'm going to the masjid because there's, there's Barakah, it's the house of Allah. Right? <laughs> so he said, uh, I will teach you a dua that uh, if you say it, right, and Allah will remove your anxiety, and Allah will help you pay your debt. And he told him this, this dua, and all of us should memorize this dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hamni wal hazm. Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from grief and anxiety. Grief is things that happened in the past, anxiety is things that will happen in the future. We're so worried too much. The economy, the interest rate, my job, uh, uh, the current jobs. What will happen to the kids when they graduate? What will happen in high school? Well, what, what are they doing right now? Uh, too much. <laughs> We're thinking too much about what will happen tomorrow and we can't enjoy the, the day today. You know, I, Alhamdulillah bless me with, you know, twins and it's, it's a, raising twins is extremely difficult. And when people ask me, I say, you know, one day at a time, I, just, I can't think about tomorrow. I just want, if I'm done today, Alhamdulillah, right? <laughs> Then tomorrow, a different day altogether. And this is what you and I should do, really. I mean, it's just too much to think about. Like, what will happen? What happen? Think about today, right? <laughs> when we're done with today, inshallah, then you can worry about tomorrow. Because if you think too far in the future, with so much anxieties, you can't sleep. And every time I'm in a, in a difficulty, I remind myself, just if I can get through the day today, alhamdulillah, everything will be okay, right? <laughs> and then tomorrow is different. So he says, Allah mani a'udhu bika min al-hamni wal-hazim. Oh Allah, I seek to feel with you from grief and anxiety. Wa a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasr. And oh Allah, I seek to feel with you from laziness and disability. People who are lazy, right? uh, they're not, 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 not happy. And people who are disabled, not physically, mentally, are not happy. I'll give you an example from a hadith. Two people came to the Messenger of Allah They're disputing in a manner, right? And he's listening, 
and he made a judgment in favor of one person. So far, so good? So the person who lost the argument, right? He said, how do I want to the Did he do anything wrong? He lost the argument. And he said, how do I want to Did he do anything wrong? The Messenger of Allah told him, Inna Allah al Allah does not like losers. When a person says, how do I want to Allah means what? I give up. Allah and this is what happens to us sometimes. We fail an exam, we lose an argument, we lose an investment, uh, you know, we gave up. No. This is laziness and disability. And he said, Walakin alayka bil kais. Don't just say, the white flag, I made my dua, you know. No. Alayka bil kais. Be smart. Think, learn from what happened. Plan ahead, right? If things overpower you, then you can say, Yeah, you feel the exam? Try again. Try a third time. You didn't get the shot? Try again. Try fourth, fifth time. If things overpower you, then you say, There's a Muslim brother who's studying to, uh, you know, to, to get his uh, medical license. And I like him. He, what he does is, he says, Ahmed, I took the exam today. I went home, I took a shower, I'm studying for the next exam without knowing whether he's going to pass or fail. He's assuming he's going to fail. <laughs> right. So he said, I'm studying for the next exam. And he's very positive about this. This is important. <laughs> he's not waiting for the results a month to study. No, he says, you know what? I'm studying. <laughs> whether I'm passing or not, I'm studying. Right? <laughs> and this should be our... Uh, uh, our, our attitude, right? You know, when, when your child, you know, is biking the first time and he falls down, do you sit down and say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you just get up and try again, right? You do that. Get up and try again. Anytime we fall down, you know, physically, right? Or, 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 or uh, you know, metaphysically, uh, we should get up and try again. You know, a sister, well, well, the first match did not work out, so I'm not going to, I hate men. <laughs> All right. You should try again. <laughs> There's no limit on how many times you can try. You know, you you're saying well, how long well, you declaring defeat already? No, you, you should try again. Right? If it didn't work out, you try again. You try again. You try again. Look at the message of Allah You know, he goes to give da'wah to in in, uh, in Mecca. It doesn't work out. He goes to Al Qaif. Uh, his stone. He comes back. He tells people from Medina, come do this. He's going everywhere. Right? And this is what we should do. We shouldn't just give up, say, the hawa quotas. No, try again, try again, try again. But I tried and I failed. Well, if you don't try, you're not going to succeed. You have to try again. So he tells the Sahabi, even though he made a dua, the hawa quotas, in Allah, I do al ajz. Allah does not like laziness and disability. I like a little case. Be smart. Plan. Try again. Right. And if something overpowers you, then you say the hawa quotas. Okay. So Allah, he said, I seek refuge with you from grief and anxiety. From disability and listening, and I seek with you to being uh, overpowered by men or, or by them. So I'm just going to summarize what I just said, inshallah, and I will conclude with a very beautiful hadith. So again, uh, happiness is, is not a feeling, it's a choice we make. <laughs> we decide whether you know whatever happened will make me happy or unhappy. We, uh, we are happy by being grateful to Allah Almighty by comparing ourselves to people who are less fortunate than we are, and do not compare ourselves to people who are more fortunate than we are, by helping uh, other people, by celebrating successes, you know, small things in life, we be happy with it. Do not wait for the next big thing. Inshallah, when I pay my house, I'll be happy. No, no. Small things. You know, I came today for Jummah, alhamdulillah, just be happy with it. Uh, you know, don't dwell on things that happened in the past. You, won't, you, you can't change it. And don't have anxiety that things will happen that will happen in the future, one day at a time. Right? And you're being honest with other people. Uh, don't overconnect yourself. If you can't do it, just say, I can't do it. You'll be upset. Well, I can't do it. I have my limitation. Right? And you should understand that too. Right? Uh, and again, don't you know, be realistic. So if you, give, uh, if you make a promise, be realistic with that, with that, that promise. And don't say uh, yes for the sake of saying it. You know, if somebody asks you for a loan, for example, you don't want to give this person a loan, right? Just 
See? So <laughs> I can't do it versus giving that person a loan, you know it's not gonna pay it off, and you know it's gonna be a problem, and then you know it's too late to, to change. So I will conclude inshallah with this beautiful hadith. Uh, it's in Muslim Imam Ahmad, <coughs> where uh, uh, the Messenger of Allah sent told us there were two people from the people of Israel, uh, a buyer and a seller. The buyer is selling a land. Right? Uh, when the seller received the land, uh, he found a sack of gold in this land. Okay. So he told the buyer, this bag of gold or sack of gold is not mine. It's yours. Right? So the buyer, the seller said, I sold you the land with everything on it. <laughs> so that bag of gold is yours. And the buyer said, I only bought the land, I didn't buy the gold. So they went to the judge to decide. Now typically you go to a judge if there's a problem, right? <laughs> like, you know, the gold is mine, right? I'm going to the, because the gold is mine, right? Now they go to the judge because nobody wants to take the gold. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally the opposite of why we go to the judge or the court today, right? So he says, well, you know, I, he sold me the land, and I bought the land, and there was a gold. The gold is his. I only bought the land, and he bought the gold. He said, well, I sold him the land with everything, and the gold is his. So he said, uh, do you have uh, children? So the buyer says, yeah, I have a son. And he told the seller, do you have children? He says, yeah, I have a daughter. He said, well, my judgment is for the boy to marry the girl, right? Mm -hmm. And use this money for them. Because if this is you know how the father, the two fathers really behave, then the children must be <coughs> two children. And then the money should go to the the, the, uh, the children basically. So I like how it happens, I like the end, I like how the judge is saying, you know, it's like divided by half. No. <laughs> Let's keep this going, you know, in the family basically. So let may Allah make us among those who are happy. Among those who are grateful to Allah Almighty, among those who are patient, among those who always appreciate what we have, among those who compare ourselves to people who are less fortunate than we are, and among people who make other people happy, however small it is. Uh, you know, uh, if you go to the market, call the person with their first name, you know, right? Uh, so just establish the relationship. All right, so I'll stop right here, inshallah, and I'll leave it to Yusuf, inshallah, we'll be ready for Asha. And, uh, Thank you very much, Lord. Um, a lot of thoughts in my mind right now. <laughs> Actually, I'm feeling like I'm not doing too bad. <laughs> so I think over the years I've learned from Brother Ahmed on these little antidotes, like he just mentioned, about calling somebody by their first name uh, at a random place, and, and that kind of surprises them. And I've done that, and and you get a nice rapport and a relationship built, and then you both feel good. Anyhow, I, I, we have some time. I would love to open this up and have a discussion, if there is a need for discussion or questions or any kind of comments. Uh, Ishaq Fair is going to be at 8 o'clock, so we have uh, 20 minutes to fill. So maybe what he was trying to allude to earlier about sharing some stories uh, among ourselves and seeing if that kind of makes us a little bit more happier or kind of uplifts us. So I'll pass around the microphone if anybody's willing to come up with something or share something with us. I'll ask the question. When you ask the question. <laughs> okay, Assalamu alaikum, Brother Ahmed. Thank you again, especially Kim, for, for your talk. But anyway, Brother Ahmed, I wanted to ask you this. I heard often in Hadith, and the Islamic, uh, Islamic Center, every time we say, make another Muslim happy. Okay, we live in a very diverse city, in the country, a lot of non-Muslims. I think it's, is it really Islamic or saying make another person happy, a human happy, or we have to always say make another Muslim happy. I think it gets a different uh, context and the content of the conversation. Is it uh, our job as a Muslim to, teach all the human equally and make sure we say humanity. That's the number one thing for us, or is it a Muslim to be the top? Well, no, I, I think you're absolutely right. It's a, you know, every human being, basically. So it doesn't have to limit to, to a Muslim. You know, I, uh, and you know, so many stories of uh, uh, brothers and sisters who became Muslims is because of you know, another Muslim 
uh, making them happy, basically, right? Uh, you know, so yes, uh, even in the Quran, uh, you know, it talks about the whole of humanity, you know, not just Muslims, right? Uh, and again, you start within yourself. So one of the things I was reading a hadith yesterday, uh, you know, one sis two sisters were complaining that the husband does not spend on them, right? <coughs> and they have to actually borrow money <laughs> to, uh, you know, just for that family. And there's a hadith in Sahih Bukhari says uh, that uh, if you give sadaqah, if you give money to your wife, it counts as a sadaqah, right? Uh, so uh, uh, you just starting by yourself first, and then you can expand the circle, basically. You know, there's, uh, uh, as Sahabi said, oh, Messenger of Allah, I have extra money. He said, spend it on your son. He said, oh, I have extra. He said, spend it on your uh, wife. I have spend it on your family. I have spend it on your neighbor. And he expanded the circle, basically, right? But you're absolutely right. You know, making other people happy regardless of their faith is, is, is important. And you know, if you look at the Islamic relief in, uh, in Katarina, the hurricane, they were actually setting up funds for that. Even though the majority <coughs> are not Muslims, you know, uh, they were doing that. So thank you for the uh, correction. <coughs> okay. And talking about, you know, the, uh, that Yusuf was saying about the uh, the human interaction, calling people by, by your first name. Uh, I was getting gas today from the gas station. And you know, the gas station, you put the credit card, and you put your zip code, and you get the gas. I mean, there were, everything is automated nowadays. It, no longer do you have to go inside and talk to someone. <laughs> it's all keeping people away from each other. Even now, all the call centers, you call, you push 0, 1, option 5, option 6. It takes about 10 minutes to talk to somebody. <laughs> And United Airlines nowadays, if you really want to talk to someone, they charge you $20, right? Oh. <laughs> Seriously, right? You have to do everything via the, the touch pad, right? So having all those computers and machines makes it more difficult for us to establish a relationship. Yeah. <coughs> I just wanted the dua to be repeated again. I was writing yeah. it down. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al Well, hazen. Yeah, grief and anxiety. <coughs> so Allah, I seek refuge in you from grief and anxiety. Wa'udhu bika, and I seek refuge with you. Min al-jubni. Wal book. Inshallah, I'll write it down so you can make a copy. وأعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل، كوارنس إنجليز. وأعوذ بك أنا أسيت في جديو من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال. غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال. أنا أعتقد إذا جوجلت يوفاد سيد الدعاء أوف سادس. Allah has a small dua he downloads. It's the dua for sadness. You will find it, inshallah. Any other questions, comments, feedback? Actually, I just wanted to but I give you a, some input on okay. the research that was done early last year. Um, some scientists, uh, social scientists, they gave, um, I, I believe it was a, a thousand people, five dollars each. And they told them, take this $5 and do whatever you want with it. And people, they gave the money, the people went and said, at the end of the day, they had to report what they did with it. And somebody said, I bought coffee and I bought this, did this and I did that. How did it make you feel? Oh, okay, whatever. The next, uh, later on, they gave a thousand people $5 each and said, you're required to spend this $5 on somebody else. And they asked those people in the evening, what did you do with the money and how you feel about it? And so they found out that the people who spend the money on others, uh, they actually were happy about it. They felt good. So, I mean, there's scientific, as if you, could, you could tell it, say scientific proof, what the Prophet said, makes sense and it's true. So it's just that scientists confirm what he said. But, uh, the sister really had a question. So um, one of the points you make is that um, take it one day at a time. Don't be anxious about the future. 
So, uh, but on the other hand, if you don't plan about future, then that's kind of planning for failures. Yep. So, very good point. This is about like how one day at a time versus planning in the future. Uh, this is my own way of dealing with things, right? It's one day at a time, one hour at a time, right? At the same time, I, I, I like is it we still plan for the future. So, you know, if I go through the day to day, it'll be fine. At the same time, I'm planning, for example, in my previous job, right? I'm going through it, I'm also planning to find another job. And that's happened to me actually, right? And it took me like you know, three months to find another job. But I'm dealing with one day at a time, right? I'm putting up with what I have <laughs> until I find something different, right? And same with the kids, one day at a time, and at the same time, shall I also plan for what will happen to them when they graduate? Uh, so, you know, it's a balancing thing. Uh, I'm going through now a different phase as, a, as a, my wife and I, as, 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 as parents. You know, we have now two teenagers in high school. It's a, it's a, a different challenge altogether, right? <laughs> and, and I'm seeing, you know, how do I go through this, right? Now he's driving, you know, what time is he coming home? Did he make it? You know, uh, do I call him every five minutes? Where are you, right? And, you know, and most of them just back off, right? I mean, you should back off <laughs> and, and just take it one day at a time, right? And uh, Ali, uh, the Allah says something very beautifully. He says, uh, 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 you have to worry about your children from worrying about them. Again, I'm going to repeat this. He says, Alaika, uh, you have to worry about children from worrying about them. Because if you're too much about your children, right, uh, you, you won't be able to function. At the same time, they, you will feel like they're trapped, right? <laughs> so there has to be some, some level of you know, balance of worrying about children. At the same time, allow them to have their feelings. Uh, you know, I'm now I'm reliving my childhood, right, to say, well, when my father would not let me drive, even to the masjid, because I, this is my first time driving, ooh, it was a big thing for me, and, you know, how could you, I'm, I'm going to the masjid, what do you mean I can't drive my car to the masjid, right? And it was a big argument, right? Now I'm reliving this, this whole thing, right, and that is, you know, for the parents to give and take, right? I mean, there should be some level of, of trust, you know. Uh, so, but I agree, right? But you know, I, I think the way I deal with stress uh, is like a, one day at a time, one meeting at a time, and then I think about tomorrow. And well, it works very well for me. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, so, um, you talked about um, you talked about comparing yourselves, at least in, in dunya, to people less fortunate. I think that makes total sense and is very logical. I think it's hard to do though, <laughs> right? We live in this society of you know keeping up with the Joneses, and you know regardless of what's in your heart, you know you know you notice things and whatnot. And social media, I think, has taken that to a whole new level where everyone's life appears perfect. And so maybe we can have a dialogue, or you can share some some thoughts of yeah. how do we keep ourselves really centered on <clears throat> what matters and not that stuff. Because see, it comes down from the beginning of the hadith, and that is to be grateful to Allah, right? So if I keep comparing myself to people who are more fortunate than we are, I'll never be grateful to Allah. Right? Uh, I, my neighbor, mashallah, his, you know, his daughter in the same you know, year as my son, and she's in this sport and that sport, and you see a picture in the newspaper, and she's going to Yale and all that stuff. And you know, if I'm going to compare my son, <laughs> who wants to go you know, a gas station, he doesn't want to go outside, he doesn't, you know, he, he doesn't study, right? Uh, so here, I'm, that's it. I'm, you know, I'll be very depressed, right? <laughs> uh, and so what we're seeing is, if you want to be grateful to Allah Almighty, you should compare yourself to people who are less fortunate than you. It doesn't mean I should not encourage my son to work harder, right? It doesn't mean I should strive to get a, a, a better paying job. It doesn't mean that, right? Uh, but if we keep complaining, we'll never make it seriously, right? And you know, I was, you know, I, I tell my kids this, you know, the lady is on the radio I'll say, she said, oh my God, they're out of organic cats, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just saying, okay. So I, I told you know my kids this story. I said, you know, to him this is the only thing. And I said, there are people who are, you know, in, in the city of city, 20, 20, 20 people die just because of no food. They're eating cats and dogs, you know, because of the siege. Right? So if you compare yourself to this, you know what? Alhamdulillah, what I have. Again, I'm still going to strive to do better, but Alhamdulillah, what I have. But you know, if you keep comparing ourselves to people who are more fortunate, we'll never be happy. Always complain. I get it. It was only 2%. <laughs> Okay, fine. <laughs> and you know, there are people who have better raises for 10 years, right? So, yeah, but... <laughs> you know, so, yeah, 
I say, well, guys, I gotta raise two percent. So I mean, you hear this all the time. So if a brother or sister comes to you complaining about something good that happened to them, something good that happened to them, you say, you thank Allah, you're uh, you know about this. Oh, I, just today, you know, I, I said, the guy was complaining all this and that. And I said, you know, thank Allah, you have a job. Oh uh, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> uh, you know, look what happened in Alisa Canyon in Corner uh, Ranch. You know, thousands of people are now in a hotel and you know. Uh, even though they're getting paid, you know, one sister, she's getting paid for in the hotel, and another sister thing is so lucky to give you a room in the Sheraton in the Universal Studio. And she said, guess what? I, I, want, I want to have my home back. I want to stay in the hotel and somebody locking my door to clean my room every single day. <laughs> you know, so to other people, you know, she's lucky. She's, somebody's cleaning her hotel room every day. And she said, no, I'm not. I'm not, you know, I'm not happy. And think of the property values in, in, uh, in Porter Ranch. You know, alhamdulillah. You know. So if someone says, well, my house doesn't go, you're not important. <laughs> I, I just wanted to add to that, that not only uh, comparing yourself to someone that is less fortunate, but also being happy for someone who is fortunate is right. very important. Yeah. Because sometimes I, you know, I, not personally, but I, I notice that people, when someone is, you know, achieves something, they're not happy for them, yeah. which is kind of the, the same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know, I mean, you know, I, uh, I, th th especially with our kids, I mean, you, you shouldn't tell your kid, well, you know, how come they got A, you got a B, and, you know. No, don't. Don't compare your kids to other kids because this is demoralizing, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Be happy for other people. And you know, generally from the heart. Yeah? So if someone, you know, just hug them, you know, embrace them, buy them a gift, I'm so happy for you. And well, like, you, you make the person feel happy that you're happy for them, right? So don't just send in congratulations, you know. <laughs> 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 They'll see it. <laughs> um, right. Brother Ahmed, I'm sorry, I, I'm just going to ask another question. In terms of your team, and you're talking about the goals, uh, I think one of my goals is to be, this year at least, I want to try to be independent of a good opinions of others to yourself. I think I want to try hard because I know raising and all that is always uh, pleasing other, making sure what other people want to live, live your life to, you know, the expectations and do you have any hadiths and the dua that you can share where we as a human being to be really connected with Almighty God and just be happy and live what the God wants us to do and not worry about everybody else's opinion of you? Okay. Is there something that you can share? Uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> just keep in mind that so even the, the uh, two, two, I want to give you this, two, two things. Uh, I forgot the first one. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, the, the, a man came to the, the people were complaining to the message of Allah about this Iman, right? And he said, well, uh, he, all what he recites is uh, every single salah. So they're complaining about him, right? So they brought him, he brought him, he says, why are you reciting the same surah every single salah? Imagine if you, the man here, Qulhu Allah, every single salah. He said, oh, Messenger of Allah, inni uhibbuha. I love Qulhu Allah. He said, hubbak iyaha khalaka jam. Your love for this surah qualifies you to enter paradise. People will criticize you, right? Definitely. As long as you yourself is doing it, you know, for the sake of Allah Almighty, for a good cause, don't worry about what the people say. Now, regarding your second one about the dua, uh, a sahabi came to the Messenger of Allah Sallam, and he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, you told us so much dua, they're so good, but we, we forgot most of them, right? He said, I'll tell you about a dua that will summarize all the dua. <laughs> okay. And it's very simple to, to, to remember. He says, uh, uh, Oh Allah, I ask you from everything good that the Messenger of Allah Sallam asked you from. Oh Allah, I ask you for all the good. Everything good that the messenger of Allah asks you from. And oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from everything bad or evil that the messenger of Allah has seek refuge with you from. Right? So it's like, you know, your kids ask you, what do you want? I want everything, right? <laughs> so you said, oh Allah, I want everything good that the messenger of Allah asks you from. And oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from everything bad, everything evil that the messenger of Allah seek refuge with you from. So very simple, right? <laughs> and I and, and you know like, this is a, a beautiful dog, right? So you don't have to say it individually, right? <laughs> All right. Any uh, so I'm trying to a couple of minutes for Isha. So let me Isha shall so make a dan or
Thank you very much, Brother Arthur. Now we have a few minutes before we start our eight o'clock.